Hey guys, this is Jack from FPV Academy in partnership with GetFPV.com. Now today we're going to look at how to bind your Spectrum DSMX FPV racing serial receiver to a Spectrum radio. Now it's a little bit more tricky than the FreeSky radios, they are quite a bit easier but let's just go over this and this video should make it a little bit easier for you. Now the first thing that you want to do is solder your spectrum receiver onto your flight controller. The flight controller that I'll be using in this video is the Lux V2. So if you have a different flight controller, then you might just want to look at the details of that flight controller, get them online, and then figure out where you need to solder your, your cable onto. So we're going to grab the scissors cut this in half because we do not need this entire thing. The Lux V2 um, only allows you to solder the cable onto it so you can't plug this in anyway. So we are going to have to solder this straight onto the flight controller. So I'm going to cut this more or less. I have a little bit extra length on there. So just cut that off at the bottom and then this is going to get plugged into the receiver like we have over here and then this is going to get soldered onto the flight controller. So let's go about it. I'm moving the radio out of the way, grabbing my soldering iron. Before I grab the soldering iron though, let's expose some of these wires a little bit. You can use whichever method you are used to using and then just get some of this off. I'm just going to skip past this, so just know that you need to take some of this off and turn these wires so that they are ready to be soldered. All right, so once you have the wires exposed, let's go ahead and tin them. Also, I'm just going to speed past this section because you guys already should know how to tin your wires. Now, once your wires have been tinned, we're going to solder it straight onto the flight controller. Now, this specific flight controller that has it right next to the number two ESC signal ports, so it says RX, 5 volt, and ground. Now, one thing to remember though is that this little receiver only allows a 3.3 volt current going through to it. If you use a 5 volt or any more than that, then it's not going to work. So for this Lux V2, you'll see that at the bottom, there's two solder pads that you can bridge and select the voltage that you want for your um, receiver out. So at the moment, it's on 5 volt. I'm going to desolder that and move that over so that it bridges the 3 volt. Now we have a 3 volt current going through to the flight controller and that will be perfect for the specific receiver. So just make sure that you have that 3 volt selected. If your flight controller can't do 3 volt then you might have a little problem. There are some step down regulators that you could use or maybe you just need to get a Lux V2 that has that built in for you. Now one thing to remember with this though is that the orange wire is your 3 volt now, the black is the ground and the gray is the signal. So the gray one I'm going to solder onto RX. So let's just heat that up and let that solder on there. The 5 volt, well it's actually 3.3 but on the board it says 5. Um, we're just going to solder that on there now. There we go, that one's on. And then the final one is the black one which is your ground. So that is the ground soldered onto the flight controller. So this little setup that I have over here is very basic. It's just the power distribution board so I can power the flight controller and then the flight controller is going to step down, down to 3 volts so we can power the receiver. So let's plug this in and see if it is successful and it should light up if we are successful. There we go, you'll see that the light is flashing and when it's flashing like that, that means that it's ready to get binded. Now the really cool thing about this is that it does have auto bind. So it is really easy to bind this and let's go over how to do that. So with that light flashing, let me move all of this out of the way and let me bring this radio back into the screen. So that light's still flashing, we are going to switch this radio on and then create a new model. So this is the DX9, it is the premium radio for the Spectrum series. So let's hold those two buttons, we'll go down all the way, add new model. Do you want to create a new model? Yes, let's create a new model. Okay, so the model has been created and it just says 15 acro. So that is the model that we have and to bind that it's very very simple. All you want to do now is switch your radio off again with the new model selected switch it off and then on the back of this radio you see that there is a little button over there that says bind. 
So with the light flashing and everything ready to go, we're going to switch this radio back on while holding that bind button in the back. So switch it on and keep holding that bind button. Binding. Then it will say that it's binding. And now you'll see that that light stopped flashing. And that means that it has, and it's giving me a message that bind failed. Now if it gives you the bind failed error, then sometimes there's a few things that could go wrong. And most of the time it's a very, very simple fix. And that is just that for some reason, it doesn't want to bind if it is so close to the radio. So what I'm doing now, switching this off, plugging this back in, let's just see that this light is lighting up again. So let's just give it some time. And there we go. So the light is flashing again. And what I'm going to do now is actually move this out of the screen entirely. I'm going to put it about uh, 10 feet away from me just so that it is out of the way and further away from the radio. So I'm putting it in the corner of the room and I'm now walking back and let's give it another shot on the radio. So now it's further away, hitting the bind button, holding that in, and we are arming or switching on the radio. Let's see if this will fix it. There we go, it has binded. So bind complete. There it tells us that it's done binding and it is now binded to your radio. So something very simple like that, it's too close to the radio. I don't know why that happens. But sometimes it does happen and that is a small little thing that we just need to troubleshoot and just move it out of the way like I just said. So once you have it binded, let's move over to the beta flight configurator and then we have a closer look on how to set it up on the computer so that you have your values on there, being able to see all the inputs on there and making sure that everything works fine. Before we do that though, one thing I forgot to mention is that you will then see, if you go and fetch it again, you'll see that that light stays a bright orange color. And that means that the binding has been successful. If I switch this off, that light is going to go off. And then that means that it hasn't binded. And if I switch it back on again, you will see that the light will go back on saying that everything's good and we are binded and ready to go. So when you see that, then you know you're ready to move on to the next step. So once you have your flight controller plugged in, you want to first unplug your receiver. Just take it out for now, we will be plugging it back in. And once you have done it, you can click on connect. So once you're inside there, you want to make sure that you have selected the correct UART port for your Serial RX. Now on the Lux V2, it is the UART 4 port. I'm not sure what your one is, you might have to make sure that you have selected the correct one. Just look in the documentation that you find online or the manual and you will know which Serial RX port you need to select to be able to activate your Spectrum receiver. So save and reboot. Once we've done that, we can connect it up again and we'll go into configuration. Now, we are running a SpecSat, which is serial based receiver, and we are using Spectrum 2048. So we can click on that and then click on save and reboot. And then once we have that, we can finally plug in the receiver. So just as it is, plug in your receiver and then you can click on connect again. So once that up can connect it, you can hit the receiver tab and then change this channel mapping to JR Spectrum and Grafner because we're using a Spectrum radio. So we'll be clicking that, click on save, and everything should be almost ready to go. So if you move your radio around, you'll see all the values moving to the sides. See everything is good to go. And then with that done though, you'll see that the values aren't exactly from 1000 to 2000. So just keep an eye on the throttle here. My throttle is lowered all the way down. It's only on 1160 and it goes up to 1841. Now we don't want that to happen. So we need to be changing that. And the same with the yaw. The yaw goes 1840 to 1159. So that's a problem, we don't want that. So to fix this problem, we will be going into the menu of your radio. We'll then go into the servo setup and then move over to where it says travel. So if you hit the travel button and then go down to the throttle section and we'll be playing around with this. Now as you'll see, as I'm rolling this, you'll see that on the beta flight screen, the throttle is decreasing down all the way to 1000. So keep rolling it until you reach just under 1000. Now for ailerons, we'll also be moving this around until it reaches the 1000 and 2000. So that one is on 1000 now and on the other side we're moving that up to 2000. 
There we go. So now the travel is from 1,000 to 2,000. The throttle top end, I forgot to do that. So I'm just going back and putting that up all the way to 2,000. And there it is on 2,000. So now the travel is from 1,000 to 2,000. And you'll see that it's kind of making a pattern. Both of them are 147. So if we just keep it like that, then for elevator, this should be changing both values to 1,000 if it's on 147. And now the top one, let's move that to 147 as well. And that will then take it to 2,000. There we go. And then the next one is the rudder. Let's just move both of those to 147 without even looking on the screen. And then they should be fine. So rudder is this one. So there you'll see the yours, 2000 and 999. And then there we go. Now you have all the travel set perfectly for that and you are ready to get flying. So once you have that, you are basically ready to fly and you have set up your receiver. Everything works fine. As you see, it moves as you are moving the, the sticks and your receiver is binded. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. If you're still struggling with this, we definitely recommend phoning the support at getfpv.com. They will help you out immediately with your problem. Sean, the guy that will probably be the one helping you is very, very helpful and he'll just walk you through everything. But thank you guys for watching this video and we really hope that you enjoy your flight. And we hope to catch you guys in our next video.